I'm going to talk now about treatment of breast cancer. Now, treatment should not begin unless we know the stage of the disease. We should know whether the tumor or the lump is localized in the breast or it has moved and uh, spread into the regional area, which is the axilla usually, or to the neck or to the lungs or to the liver. Or, so we have to do all the investigations uh, that make us uh, really clear uh, about where the uh, disease is. If the disease is still in the breast, which is uh, usually we call it stage one, uh, surgery is the best. And we do surgery, uh, in the past we used to, to do uh, mastectomy, removal of the breast in all cases, whether it is a small uh, lump or big lump. And uh, in addition to, the, uh, to removing the breast, we usually used to uh, clear the axilla from the nodes, uh, thinking that there might be some uh, cancer cells in them. And then, uh, according to this uh, pathology and uh, the size of the lesion, we either do uh, radiotherapy uh, or, uh, or we advise chemotherapy. Now, chemotherapy came in the early 70s uh, when uh, it was given to patients uh, when they have uh, either a deletion above 2 cm in size or they have uh, metastasis to the axillary lymph nodes. It made a lot of difference in survival. Uh, so uh, this is the first advancement that we saw when we started giving chemotherapy to patients uh, after surgery. The second advancement that we witnessed is that in 1982, when, uh, when Umberto Verlusconi from Italy uh, published a report uh, about 700 patients that he uh, did not remove the breast in them, and compare them to radical mastectomy, 700 patients, uh, the same number. Uh, he found, after following these patients for 20 years, that the uh, cure rate or survival rate is the same. So uh, this made a really uh, a big uh, revolution because a patient, uh, all patients like this uh, to have their breast uh, not removed, and we started doing uh, partial mastectomy plus uh, axillary uh, node dissection. The third uh, advancement uh, actually uh, is, uh, began when we knew how to avoid uh, axillary dissection and all the consequences of, uh, of axillary dissection uh, like swelling of the arm and so on, infection and, and uh, restriction of the movement of the arm. All of this followed the uh, axillary dissection. Uh, axillary dissection uh, never uh, in the recent years been necessary uh, when we do sentinel lymph node biopsy. We inject a dye before we start the operation around the tumor and after five minutes we, uh, we uh, uh, look for the sentinel node which is the first lymph node in the axilla that receives the dye. And, uh, Consequently, this is the first node that receives tumor cells from the uh, tumor. We uh, remove that node and, put, and send it to pathology. If the report is that the, this node is negative, then we stop there. We don't remove the axillary nodes. This made a lot of difference to avoid axillary nodes. Now, uh, of course, with, uh, you know, uh, saving the breast, avoiding axillary nodes, made things so much easy to, to the patient to accept surgery and uh, also uh, what made her also accept surgery is reconstruction even if, uh, if we remove the breast we can make uh, reconstruction and uh, make substitute for the breast now for the chemotherapy there are so many uh, drugs new drugs that uh, really are uh, helpful and uh, prevented the recurrence and metastasis uh, now, there are hormonal drugs, if the, uh, if, if the cancer cells are hormone receptors positive, we give them tamoxifen. Uh, if the 
uh, we can give them also uh, aromatase inhibitor if the uh, patient is uh, in the postmenopausal group. Then chemotherapy also we have so many uh, new target therapy uh, like Avastin, like uh, Herceptin, uh, like Tyker. All of these are new drugs uh, which are called target therapy. They really kill the cancer cells and without touching the normal cells. And uh, so there are the, the advancements are really rolling. Year after year, we discover new, new drugs. Thank you.